Now recapping tonight's main stories. The ballot booths have closed. Now South Australia awaits to see if Mike Rank can defy bad opinion polls and hold off Isabel Redmond's Liberals to secure a third term as Premier. And North Queensland battens down ahead of a cyclone expected to bring 170 kilometre an hour winds and up to 300 millimetres of rain. The cyclone is expected to hit the coast tomorrow. And that's the latest ABC News. We cross now to the ABC Election Centre for live coverage of the count with Kerry O'Brien. Thanks, Jessica, and welcome to the ABC's Election Centre for tonight's South Australian election, for which the count began half an hour ago, and this is shaping up as a nail-biting contest with a knife-edge outcome. Dramatic swings are not unknown in this state, but if today's news poll in The Australian is any guide, and it usually is, then we'll see a big swing away from the RAND government in the primary vote at least. In fact, news poll is showing a remarkable 12% swing away from Labor in Adelaide's primary vote, coming back to 58, uh, 52 to 48% to the Liberals in two-party preferred terms. The big question, of course, is whether enough of those votes will go to the Liberals once preferences are counted, to allow them to form a government in their own right. But one thing is clear, there is a big swing on. There's also a very strong chance we'll see a hung parliament by the end of the night, or even no clear result at all because there'll be no postal votes counted. Whatever the outcome, this will be a stark contrast to Mike Rand's landslide win four years ago. This has been a remarkable turnaround for the Liberals under their new leader, Isabel Redmond. Labor or Liberal will have to win at least 24 seats to form a government in their own right. Labor currently holds 28 of the 47 seats, the Liberals 14 with five independents. You can see from that breakdown that Labor only has to lose five seats to lose its majority and then have to rely on independent support to stay in power, while the Liberals will have to pick up ten seats, needing a swing of up to 10% to form a government without independent support. A massive task, but possible. The South Australian Electoral Commission's count of more than a million votes will flow straight through to the ABC's computers here at our election centre, and with me tonight to interpret those figures as they emerge is a man with encyclopaedic knowledge of this state's electoral history, Dean Gench, Professor of Politics at Flinders University. Dean, what indicators are you looking for at these early stages? Well, three key indicators, Kerry. The first would be the size of the swing. Anything from up to 7% or at 7% means that there'd be a hung parliament. More than 7% means the Liberals would have a chance of winning. The, the second index I'm looking at is the five independent seats, because in the case of a hung parliament, they're going to be there to decide who will form the government. So what happens in those seats is crucial. And the third one, of course, is what's going to happen in Chafee, because that's where the only National Party member has a seat, and it's been a crucial seat. And of course, we've got uh, the very first trickle of early uh, votes in. Nothing really to talk about yet, but, uh, but that's going well, to speed up very quickly, I would imagine. It's a trickle. Um, one interesting one is in Chafee, the seat I just mentioned, where there's been on the early... There's only 0.1% of the votes counted, but there's something like a 12% swing towards the Liberals, away from the National Party. OK. Our panel of experts tonight also includes Deputy Premier and Treasurer Kevin Foley, Liberal Party Upper House member and frontbencher Rob Lucas, and the ABC's Dominic Swartz, who will be crossing to the frontline figures fighting this election in seats around the state. Uh, Kevin Foley, I would think you've got every cause to be nervous tonight. Oh, very much so, Kerry. Uh, very anxious, very nervous and... Uh... Uh, yeah, it's quite anxious about what will be a very tough, difficult night. So, what are, what are the key seats that, uh, starting this campaign, you might not have thought you were going to lose, but you now are worried about? I think the key seats are the ones that are identified in all of the commentary. They are the seven seats that we hold uh, with margins under 10%. Uh, they are clearly all vulnerable. Uh, I hope that they're not. I hope that we can hold on to some of those seats. But you'd have to say there are seats beyond the 10% mark, depending on the size of the swing, that uh, you'd have to be concerned about. So we just need to see how it rolls out over the course of the next few hours. But clearly, uh, the Labor Party vote uh, is going to be under some uh, duress tonight. Are you prepared to concede even the possibility that the Liberals might be able to form government in their own right? Oh, well, you, can't, you can't rule that out. Of course I can't rule it out. I mean, I think the indications are that uh, there's every real chance that Isabel Redmond will finish the yes. next 48, 72 hours Premier of the State. I hope not. But in her own right? Well, it could be. Let's which, wait. Which would be a massive outcome. Well, it would be a uh, remarkable outcome. But, you know, we've got a long way to go. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of votes to be counted and it's going to be a complicated outcome. Uh, you know, I think the Liberals governing in their own right will be 
a, a slim chance of that, but a, but a real chance. Uh, the more likely scenario I see out of this will be a, a hung parliament. Uh, Rob Lucas, you tell me that you've swung from uh, pessimist to cautious optimist over the course of the campaign. Yeah. So what does the cautious optimist say? The, the, well, look, I think my colleagues would laugh at the notion of me being anything other than pessimistic on election day. And uh, as I said, I've only moved to cautious optimism as a result of the news poll and the feedback from the, uh, the booths today. Um, Kevin's indicated the sort of seats to keep an eye on, but the early feedback we've heard from seats like Adelaide may well bear watching. I mean, there's a seat at 10.5%. I suspect both the major parties probably weren't polling it, uh, if at all, they certainly weren't polling it heavily, um, to see how it was going. Uh, from our viewpoint, we believe we've got a good candidate, an exceptional candidate, an exceptional uh, campaign. So I think there's, there are some seats beyond the 7% seats that if this swing is of the order of 7, 8, 9 and 10%, uh, then we need to have a look at seats like Adelaide and others just to see what sort of feedback we're getting very early on from the booths. On that scenario, on the very least, you're looking at a, a hung parliament and the chance of being able to form a government with independence. Well, I think that's why I've moved from pessimism to mm. cautious optimism, <laughs> uh, uh, Kerry. If there's one thing more than anything else that you would nominate as the reason for this huge backlash against Labor, what would it be? Um, well, I think it's summarising Isabel Redmond. Uh, Isabel Redmond, in the campaign she ran, uh, she brought a party together in a short space of time. Uh, she campaigned on an issue of uh, uh, trust, um, she campaigned uh, on issues that the people of South Australia obviously have listened to because clearly whatever happens tonight there has been an enormous swing to her. So I think uh, far and away the one single factor is Isabel Redmond. She is a stark contrast to the leadership of the, uh, the current, current government and clearly that struck a tune with the, uh, the electors as we're seeing in the early results. OK. Quite apart from Labor's key swing seats, the five independents will attract close scrutiny tonight. Mount Gambia is one of them. Rory McEwen has held this seat for 13 years. Despite his Liberal background, he served on Mike Rand's front bench, but he's now retired. The Liberals are expecting Steve Perryman to bring Mount Gambia back into the fold. In and around Port Pirie, the seat of Frome is another must-win for the Liberals. Once held by former leader Rob Kerrin, it was won by independent Jeff Brock in a by-election in January last year, but he has an uncomfortable cushion of just 1.7% to defend against the Liberals' Terry Boylan. The seat of Mitchell in Adelaide's Inner West is another critical seat held by former Labor MP and now independent Chris Hanna with a tiny margin of just 0.6%. If this seat falls, it's likely to go to Labor. Then there's the Nationals leader, Carleen Maywell's Riverland seat of Chafee. She also accepted an invitation to Mike Rand's front bench as a minister uh, for the Murray River back in 2004. She's still there, but may pay a price for the growing backlash against Labor. And the Liberals have made a huge effort to unseat her in this campaign with their candidate, Tim Whetstone. Carleen Maywald joins me now from the electorate. Carleen Maywald, what, uh, what are you feeling right now about your chances of being back in that parliament for another term? Well, I'm anxious, as um, everyone is. Uh, for politicians, this time of the electoral cycle is very anxious time. Um, we've run a very good campaign. I've got a great campaign team. And uh, now we're just waiting for the count. The Liberals have made a big effort to take this seat back this time. How, from looking from your perspective, how effective has that campaign been? Uh, well, it's a very close campaign. Uh, they ran a, a very tough campaign last time and there was a very uh, substantial swing to me uh, and I was a minister within the RAND government during that election as well. This time round, however, I'm facing a whole range of other issues that have uh, collided in the Riverland uh, over the last four years with um, the fact that this region is, is suffering from low commodity prices and the, the worst drought to ever hit uh, this nation in living memory. And I happen to have been the water minister during this period. That has all come to a head and, and voters uh, have, have been concerned that uh, they feel they've, they've um, been hard done by, particularly by the rules of the Murray-Darling Basin. Clearly there's a very strong sentiment against Labor generally, very strong uh, uh, in Adelaide. To what extent do you think you will suffer from that backlash as a part of that team? Yeah. I'm certain that, that that will have an impact as well up here in the Riverland, uh, but I do honestly believe that the Riverland already had that uh, that feeling about Labor anyway. It's a very conservative seat. Labor have traditionally got a very low vote up here. Um, so it, it's not a seat where um, Labor is uh, a popular party. So let's pose one hypothetical. Sometimes politicians answer hypotheticals, sometimes they don't. Let me pose this one, uh, that there is a hung parliament uh, and the Liberals are looking to form a government. Are you prepared to talk with them as well as with Labor? 
Um, as I've said right throughout the campaign, I'll talk to anyone if it's a hung parliament and uh, I'll be prepared to listen to what they've got to say. Uh, they're all questions for tomorrow, though. We'll wait and see what the count is. How late a night do you think it's going to be for you in Chafee? Uh, well, that, that depends how close it is, of course, because there has been a large number of postal votes. So uh, if, if it is very, very close, then it could be days before we might know the outcome. If it uh, is not so close, then we will know tonight. So uh, tonight we'll be looking and watching, as everyone will be, to see the results. And uh, I'm hopeful that we've done enough um, throughout the campaign, but also throughout the four years, to have enough support to get over the line. Carleen Maywald, I know you've had to make an effort to get to our feed point uh, for this, but uh, thanks very much for that. No, pleased to be here. Thanks, Kerry.